Welcome to part two of my Entity Framework series on the database first approach and in this video I'm going to move on to foreign keys and relationships or at least a pretty simple case of a foreign key. So to get the full benefit from this video it would be helpful if you are familiar with foreign keys in the context of a relational database model. You'll want to fully understand what's going on in the back end in the database before you can appreciate and understand what the Entity Framework is doing for you. If you want to get caught up to this point, in part one we just created a simple recipes database under our local DB server and added a single recipe table with two columns, ID and name. So since we're doing the database first approach, the first thing I want to do is add the relationship in my database. So I'm going to add a new table that will share a relationship with recipe and that will be the category table and a category will be something like breakfast, lunch, or dinner, something like that. I want to keep the ID column. I'm going to go over to the properties window and set his identity to true by double clicking in the property value there. And then I'll add one column, name, mvarchar50, and no nulls. And then update my database. Okay. Now I need to right click on my recipe table and go to view designer and if you're familiar with foreign keys and how they work this will look very familiar to you. I'm going to add a category ID column which will be an integer and I'm going to leave allow nulls checked just in case I ever want a recipe that does not belong to a category. Then I need to go over to foreign keys, right click, add a new foreign key and it's prompting me for the name. I'm going to hit enter to accept the default name and you can see here that it generated the SQL for us and we just need to replace these column names. The first column is the column on this table that shares the relationship and that would be the category ID column. And Then it's asking which table and which column is this referencing. Well it's referencing the category table and the ID column on that table. So I'm going to hit update again and I have all the necessary changes to my database. And again we are using the database first approach so we want these changes to propagate down to our model. And you can see here my model still only has the recipe class here so I need to let my model know that the database has changed and I can do that by right clicking here and selecting update model from database and as you can see it picked up the new category table so we want to make sure that's checked and make sure include foreign key columns in the model is checked also so now you can see not only did it add a new category class it added this line between them which signifies the relationship and if you're not familiar with the notation here this asterisk symbol means that a category can have many recipes and a recipe can have zero or one categories and that zero is there because we left the allow nulls checked on the category ID property or column. So I need to save all so I save my changes to my model. I also forgot to mention um, to get caught up to this point we also created a console application and added a new entity data model from our database to that application. So now in my program.cs file I just have some simple code here and the first thing I want to do is add a couple of new categories and if you watched part one you should know how to do this pretty easily context.categories and I'll just do it the shorthanded way here new category we'll call this one breakfast then I'll copy this and add a lunch category also. Save all and run my application to get those rows in there. If I right click on my category table and select view data I have my breakfast and lunch rows. I'm also going to view the data on my recipe real quick just to make sure I'm starting clean and it looks like I already have a row there from a previous test so I'm going to delete that so that I can start fresh. 
Okay. So now what I want to do, I'll comment these out is add a new recipe to my database and link it to one of these recipes or as, I'm sorry assign it to one of these categories and we can do that a few different ways the first way I'm going to show you is using just the ID properties so the first thing I'll do is query the category I want using a link method and lambda expression. So I want to find the breakfast category. And then I'm going to use the shorthanded way again and add a new recipe to my recipes collection. And I'll set the name equal to uh, cereal. And then, in my object initializer, I can also set this category ID property to category.id. Okay? And that should be all I need. I'll go ahead and run the application. And if I refresh the data on my category table you can see that it hasn't changed when I refresh my recipe table I do have my cereal recipe with a category ID of 1 which is the breakfast category okay so that works and it's a really simple way to do it another way is to use navigation properties so if I go back to my model you can see not only did it add the category ID here on the recipe it added the category navigation property okay navigation property is essentially just what it sounds like it is a property that allows you to navigate the relationship between two entities so I'm going to say that the second way I'm going to do this is using the recipe dot category navigation property so I'll actually borrow this line and I'm going to comment this out. And this time I want the lunch category. And I'll add another recipe. This time I'll do um, pizza and hit comma. And you can see here the category property, which is of type category. So this is the navigation property that I can use to find or assign the category that this recipe belongs to. So I'm just going to set that equal to the category we just retrieved from the database. I'll save my changes and run the application again. So now I should expect a pizza row in my recipe table with a category ID of 2 for lunch. Refresh my data and I have my pizza row with a category ID of 2. Okay, now if I go back to my model, you can see that not only do I have a navigation property here on the recipe class, I also have one on the category class and it is called recipes and it's pluralized because this is a collection so this is a collection of recipes that are assigned to the given category okay so I'm gonna borrow this line again and comment this out and the keyboard shortcut I'm using for that is control E and then C. So the third way is we will use category.recipes navigation property. And I will do, uh, I'll look for the lunch category again. 
and I can see here when I category when I type category dot and I get my IntelliSense that I have the recipes navigation property and that's a I collection of type recipe so all I have to do is add a new recipe here and again I'm using the shorthanded way just to save some coding lines and I don't have to bother with any of the recipe properties here I don't have to bother with the recipe dot category navigation property I don't have to bother with the category ID simply by adding this recipe to the recipes collection on this category it will take care of the relationship for me because it's a navigation property so I'll just set the name equal to uh, soup and that's all I have to do I will save the application and then run it so now I should expect a soup row in my recipe table with a category ID of 2 okay so really three different ways to do the same thing and which method you choose will be sort of dependent on your application flow and which um, which objects you have available to you okay so I'll comment this out and now we can just look at um, how we can query these relationships without using any joins or anything that you would have to use if you were writing raw SQL statements so for example actually um, I'll just borrow this again and I'm gonna create a new list of recipes and that's just going to be the recipes, the category dot recipes <clears throat> dot to list. Then I'll use a link for each here. And console dot console dot line r dot Uh, name and then I need to add a console dot read key save it and run it okay so it pulled back the recipes pizza and soup which belong to this category in this line here Okay, so I needed two lines to uh, do a join and fetch the recipes that belong to this category. And then we can do it the other way um, with the category or with the recipe. So I'm going to fetch my pizza recipe, or well, I'll do the cereal recipe, and I'll do a console.write line recipe dot category. So using my navigation property dot name. Save this and run it and of course it belongs to breakfast okay so that's all the code we needed for three different ways to do the exact same thing okay so I hope this helps you out in navigating and using simple relationships in your entity framework applications and in the meantime I'm going to move on to a new video discussing probably many to many relationships before I move on to the other approaches to entity framework so thank you for watching and I hope it helps Thank you.